So we have here again our Jon Snow map of 1854, uh, the London cholera outbreak on the Soho district of London off of Broad Street. And uh, again, uh, if you look at the, the uh, description, you're going to find a link to earlier videos. This is a part of a series. In the earlier videos, I set up all this, um, this uh, data set. Again, the red dots being death and the triangles being uh, water pumps. And the working theory that Jon Snow had in 1854 is that the cholera outbreak was related to water pumps. And so far, we've shown this pretty well with visual patterns. So we've been looking at this with the red dots, seeing that there's a concentration around Broad Street. We also did the standard ellipse of one standard deviation. This ellipse represents 68% of the uh, deaths are within this ellipse. Then we did the mean, uh, mean center of all the deaths, so the central point, which is this uh, green dot showing the deaths. So we, we've shown in a few different ways that the Broad Street pump is spatially correlated with the death. Uh, where death is taking place and so then if we uh, want to now I want to take this a little bit further and do some more analysis one analysis that Jon Snow according to uh, some some uh, historical accounts did is that he looked at taking the straight line proximity analysis kind of saying which household which pump would you go to um, this way we kind of see like a service area for pumps and so like if I zoom to the pump layer you can see what I mean. Like so the households in this area would go to Oxford Market and the households in this area would go to this. You gotta remember that or you gotta you gotta imagine that back then, um, whenever you're going to a water pump for your sole source of water, um, in London, um, you weren't exactly uh, having you weren't having running water inside your house. So you had to walk from your house to a water pump and then back to your house carrying the water. And so that was that was quite a bit of, of work to do. And so you really went to the closest water pump. Um, and that was like a big thing. But as you can see, each one of these pumps aren't evenly distributed across the uh, city area or across the neighborhood. So each one of these pumps are going to have different service areas. Uh, people are going to be approaching the pumps based off where it's the closest one. So what we want to do is to define that space. And to do that, we're going to do a Thiessen polygon. And to understand Thiessen polygons, you got to think of how they're made. But what it does is basically define a service area. And so you take uh, places like, for example, water pumps, or you can take something like, so you can imagine each one of these dots being one of the water pumps, or it can even be something like a gas station or grocery store. In modern examples, any place that has uh, kind of a service, that, that's where people are going to go to. Or this can even be electrical grids. There's a lot of applications for this. And so whenever you have each one of those uh, places, what you want to do is connect the lines between them. And so we draw straight lines between all of them. So we'll do like that, for example, with the pumps. Then you find the midsection. That section, that's going to be the break point where if you're on this line, it's more interesting for you to go to the red or to the blue. If you're at that middle point, it's the break point. So you do that for each one of the, lo uh, the location, each one of the lines, you break them in the middle. Then you connect those midpoints together and that's gonna be the surface area, for example, the, for the blue one, that's its surface area. Um, this can be seen better if we look at some examples. So for example, here I have a lot of dots and these can be representing pumps, for example, like in our case, water pumps. We're going to connect a line for each one of those water pumps to each other. Then we're going to find those midpoints, those uh, midpoints on the lines. As we get those midpoints on the lines, then we're going to finally reconnect those midpoints, and then we're going to get these in polygons. This polygon now, this area here, is going to be the best area for the service of that pump. So if I was hanging out here in this neighborhood, I'm going to go to this pump as opposed to going to any other pump because it's going to be the closest one. Um, here's another example. So here's a bunch of pumps. We draw midlines in between them all. We find the midpoints. We connect all those midpoints to each other. And then that later becomes our decent polygon. So we got a kind of a full idea here of how these work. And just to realize that whenever you see a, a high concentration of points, you're going to have really small decent polygons. As low concentrations will be uh, larger larger polygons. So anyways, going back to our Broad Street pump, um, if I want to make a Thiessen polygon, I can go into Arc Toolbox, 
And in our toolbox, we're going to have that under the analysis tools. But in order to use it, uh, I think we need to have an extension on for spatial analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the extension under customize extensions and check that box on. Make sure that box is on for spatial and spatial analyst. Once I have that on, let's go back over to our toolbox analysis. We look at the proximity analysis. Oh, no. Um, I know it's somewhere over here. I don't know why I always have such a trouble, hard time finding this, this one. There it is right in front of me. Create these in polygons. One thing to also realize is that, you know, a good way to find tools, uh, if you don't want to stumble around the toolbox, is just go to geoprocessing, search for tools, and you can just type in Thiessen, and you'll be able to get, a, get the tool. So if I do create these in polygons, my input feature is going to be my pumps, and so I choose the pumps. Then I'm going to choose where I want to export it out to. This is my working folder that I'm using right now since I set my database. And in the output fields, I'm going to set them to all. This is going to put all the output fields uh, that are involved with the pumps into the polygons. Okay, so whenever I push OK for that, it's going to run in the background. You can see it running, and once it's done, it's going to add it in. And then we can see the uh, polygons that we that we get. <clears throat> so let's just give that a second. Again, if you uh, get impatient like I do on when the, if something's running, kind of nervous, did it actually run? Go to geoprocessing results and check it out there, and you can see the little hourglass. It doesn't really tell you anything about how fast it's going, but... It does at least give you an idea of that it's running and so it went ahead it ran, ran and now it should be um, adding it in to my arc map and there it is and so now we have here our decent polygon check it out um, <clears throat> it already it kind of clips the extent to the uh, area that has the uh, the pumps but we could continue these out longer or we could actually change the extent to get more of a larger extent but we're really interested in the broad street pump and that and we can see here the deaths we don't have anything with outside of the deaths so um, <clears throat> all of our deaths deaths that take place we know which pumps would be the closest for them to go to and so if we check this out though this is really interesting um, I'm just going to change some colors here to make it a little bit easier to uh, read uh, change that over to no fill color make it a little bit thicker of a line and let's go with a blue uh, but if I hit OK I can see here what's going on and this is actually still going very well supporting my uh, hypothesis for my theory that the Broad Street Pump is the one to blame you can see here that even though we do have of course some deaths that are happening outside the exact service area of Broad Street Pump uh, most deaths are happening within the decent polygon. So that's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> we can also do a spatial join. This is, this is going to be very nice. Let's do a spatial join uh, between the decent polygon and the uh, the pump, the, I mean the decent polygon and the deaths that are happening. And so <clears throat> if I go to the deaths that are going on, right click and I uh, say join. And I want to go ahead and say join here. And instead of doing an attribute join, I want to do a spatial join. So it's going to be based off a of location. And then here, I want to say that I want to join it to the pumps of Thiessen Polygon. What this is going to do is it's going to take the polygon information and put it into the dots, into the depth. So it's going to say what is the closest polygon, uh, what is the closest pump for each one of those depths. Pretty, pretty nice. Um, and so. I want to keep all the settings as is and uh, again this is my uh, working folder but to be a little bit more uh, clearer for future in case I come back to this I'm going to say death pump um, SP join so then this way I could know that that was the spatial join between death and pumps and I'll go ahead and hit OK and so that's going to run and so now I got here a new uh, dots over here these new dots and if I check out the attribute table on them you can see here now each one of the deaths should have a name associated with it which is going to be the pump that they were uh, going with and so we can actually show that through a multiple multiple attribute 
uh, display. And so I'm going to go to the layer properties of the death pumps joints I just went through. And in the layer properties, I'm going to say I want to uh, map out with multiple attributes. In the first field, I will choose the name. And then I want to click all, add all values. And so that's going to put in the different names here. And I'm going to change this color uh, scheme. I don't really like it that much. So I'm just going to choose something else that you know I, I think maybe looks better. So let's go with something like, oh no, that's even worse. Uh, let's see here. Okay, yes, yeah, multicolors. And some of these over here are too yellow. So let's see if we can find something here. Um, we need to have some very different colors. So I'm going to go with the first one. That one has a lot of different colors on it. And so uh, for the size here, I want to say that I want to change the symbol size. I would like to vary that from 4 to 18, but I want that to be varied by the number of deaths that are happening. Remember, we call that count. So we choose count. Um, let's go with five classes. And the natural breaks jinx method is not so bad, but you can see here, different uh, breaks here that it's coming in at. So 1, 5, 13, 9. So the highest address has 13 in it. And so um, we go ahead and say that's fine. And we hit OK and OK. And so this should give us kind of a better idea. We can see here the, con the, the number of debts, you know, again, visually, um, and color wise so the broad street ones are are um, magenta but you see if i look even at the ones that happen not in the broad street service area and they say the ones that happen here at newman street then the ones that are closer to broad street service areas actually have larger dots and so you can see here larger dots over here even for for this pump and over here for this pump well i guess it's still it's on this side of the uh polygon so it's kind of interesting to see that even if it does fall outside the Broad Street Polygon, the death concentrations are as are closer to the uh, Broad Street uh, Polygon. And so that is another way of, of proving it. So now we've proved it so many different ways. Um, and so now, uh, now we'll move on to prove it a different way in the next video.